And Jamshedpur have won the Hero ISL. Hyderabad are the Hero of Indian Super League champion. Well, if you have also been encountering idle daytime thoughts about when the football action is going to be back, when the thrill of supporting your team on a match day is going to be back, and when you're going to see your favorite players on a pitch that's not a training ground, well, you are not alone, my friend. You are joined by Pulas Dhar, Kaushik Varun, Shaiju Damodran, and myself, Suyash, as four people who are encountering football FOMO during this off-season. And we like nothing more than getting together every fortnight on the Let Football Live show and discussing everything that's happening around the Hero ISL just to keep the soul satiated, guys, because that's important, right? You need to feed the beast in a way. So thank you, gentlemen, for joining us on this latest edition of the Let Football Live show. Uh, Shaiju, opening salvo to you. Last week, uh, in fact, last show, you had said that, uh, you, you'd sort of said Kerala Blasters FC Twitter a buzz. Uh, you'd, you'd said that uh, there was a Central South European signing that would be uh, basically the Alvaro Vasquez replacement. So I just wanted to know ki gaadi kaha tak hai. Where, where is the car reached? Is, what's the situation over there? Uh, hi, Suyash. Uh, nice, to, nice to join uh, you people with uh, again in LFL Live. Likewise. So, uh, so I, I also expected uh, to, it to happen uh, within a week. Actually, I said it uh, do, making means uh, according to some uh, my personal, uh, the, the, the reports which I got from my personal sources. So I also wish, uh, I expected it. I 100% expected it to happen within a week. But obviously, but sometimes uh, our anticipations can't go uh, the way which we want them to, right? So that's happened. But, but, but I'm still, Suyash, uh, Abhi Suyash, listen to me. Uh, I am still there in, uh, stuck. I am still standing in my point. That player will be signed Obviously, uh, some unprecedented delays are happening. Obviously, before signing a player, it will take time. It can take time. Okay. Yeah. But but the player will be f- from the South Central European nation. He can be from Montenegro. He can be from Serbia. He can be from Spain. He can be even from Portugal. Oh, see, I'll tell you what. Kerala Blasters FC fans will not care when the signing is announced as long as it's announced. And, and that's and, you all. Know, Ronaldo wants out, so I don't know the whole Portugal thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, as have you have you heard Shaiju's uh, commentary? Uh, Ronaldo goal shout as well. It's 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 pretty Absolutely. it's pretty lethal. It's yeah. pretty lethal. So so you know, just just throwing a bone out there, maybe we'll see that. Ah, yeah, it's just just speculation. Uh, but yes, talking of transfers, okay, Shaiju Chetan, yes, one more point you had to make. Yes, but uh, apart from I, I want to share uh, an off-the-ground update for the Kerala Blasters fans who are watching our LFL show. Uh, so uh, it is it is about the sad demise of uh, Adrian Luna's six-year-old daughter. I think it's a right time to uh, say heartfelt condolences from myself and the entire Indian football fraternity uh, to the sorrowing family of Adrian Luna. On a somber note, importantly, Shaiju, like you mentioned, our thoughts and prayers do go out to uh, uh, Adrian Luna's family and little Julieta, and uh, we hope that you know she is in a better place at the moment. Um, we get back to transfers and pull us with uh, with Florentine Pogba as well. One of the one of the names that has joined the Hero ISL. Wanted to ask you about him in the kind of profile of a player he is and what he represents. Uh, to the league as well. Because how I see it is he's in that sweet spot where he's still not uh, past his peak. Uh, physically, we might see a good few years from him and now you see players you know, well into their 30s performing at, at, at a peak level. And uh, of course, the weight that the surname brings, the Pogba, mm. you know, uh, even though he's Paul Pogba's brother, uh, do you think that it's a co- it's, it's that combination of, of him having that surname and him also not being over the hill in terms of, uh, you know, as a player, is that the kind of signing that can only do well for the, for the league going forward? I think so. But, but Suresh, first, it's important to know the player signed. I, I understand right. the, the Pogba angle, but I was doing a little bit of research on who, what kind of a player is he. First and foremost, I think he's a great presence in the dressing room. I think managers, head coaches do look at that. Uh, I think Juan Ferrando can be, he can be a bit of a brooding personality, a bit of a thinker, serious person. He says that himself. So sometimes you need a character who's lighthearted, 
expressive. You've seen the whole Pogba family. The two brothers have called him the craziest of the lot. So there's going to be a presence which, which might alleviate the seriousness of a dressing room, not in terms of what they want to win and the goals, but sometimes when a team is low and down and out, there are these characters who can pick a dressing room out of that situation. So I think that yeah. way, he's a, he's a good player. Uh, but on the pitch as well, look at some of the stats. I think um, the, the, the head coach who signed him for Sant Atian, I don't know if, if that's the correct pronunciation, is, the, is Christoph Goltier, who is now manager of PSG. Uh, even right. in his two seasons in League Two, his side conceded the lowest number of goals. And Florentine, I'm going to call him Florentine now because we know he's a Pogba. Florentine was part of, let's say, 80 to 90% of those games. Uh, he's in yeah. his peak age as a defender. So he ticks a lot of the boxes when it comes to getting a, a dominating center back, right? At the same time, and there is no shame in, in, in this that, that there are eyeballs for the Pogba surname. I think clubs worldwide make signings and sometimes there's a sweetener that, hey, listen, there's, there's this as well. There's that recall value. Okay, people talk right. about that surname because of a higher profile brother who's supposedly going to play for Juventus. And, and that kind of just brings about an awareness, not for the club, but for the league and, and for the country's football as a whole. I'm just hoping he does as well as a player as we've, we might expect of him. And kind of, hopefully, it's not up to him to match up to the surname, but at least get some positive eyeballs as, as himself as well, as Florentine Pogba doing well in the ISL. No, one thing for sure, we're going to get a lot of flair and entertainment coming from him just by virtue of that surname and how he's been called the craziest of the three brothers. Uh, but moving on from Pogba, Varun, I'll come to you. Uh, and the red and golds are not too happy uh, these days. Uh, their Hira in, in Hira Mondal has actually gone and joined Bengaluru FC. And this just points towards the kind of squad that Bengaluru FC are building. I've lost count of how many players they've signed in the fullback position. You know, they've got Prabir Das, they've got Hira Mondal there now, now Rem Roshan Singh. Besides the fact about how they would potentially line up, and that's for Simon Grayson to address. But uh, just, just your thoughts on, on Hira Mondal leaving uh, SC's Bengal for, for uh, Bengaluru FC? Well, uh, I absolutely 100% agree with you with the names you said uh, for the defence position and also in the wings for Bengaluru FC. But yes, Hiramondo leaving, even I didn't expect it. And even the management I think for the Red and Gold Brigade, they didn't expect. Because Hira himself being uh, like a big East Bengal fan, and I think, you know, he had some uh, like uh, wishes to stay back in the club. But still, I think he got a good opportunity and a good scope, you know, to play for Bengaluru FC. And he was looking forward to it. So, I think... Uh, uh, professionally or maybe like making that decision, Hira made a good one, but uh, he has left a lot of uh, Red and Gold uh, Brigade fans like very sad and they're heartbroken because, uh, you know, if you all remember that uh, that goal line save, not that, those goal yes. line saves uh, in the last season. So he was outstanding. That was his first season. He was brilliant. Uh, his speed and the way, you know, uh, solid at the defense. So I think, yes, East Bengal will miss him, but best wishes for Hira, the diamond in Bengaluru FC jersey. You know, and apart from transfers, there's one big return to the Hero ISL uh, of, of a certain uh, profile of player that that player that is trained in the Hero ISL before. And uh, he's back now. So we're going to be now moving on to sort of the main event of, of the show. Uh, you know, Carlos Peña is back as FC Goa head coach. And uh, in his first interview with the club, he said something about there being a sense of destiny about how he came back to FC Goa. Uh, so we're going to ask him about that and a lot more about what he feels about his move to FC Goa is going to bring about. So Carlos, why don't you come right in? Thank you so much for joining the Let's Football live show all the way from sunny Spain. How are you doing? Hello. Hello. It's a, it's a Hello. pleasure to, to be with you. Well, first of all, I have been listening to you. Uh, send my condolence, okay, to, to Adrian Luna for the for the very bad moment he's living, I, I send him and his family a, a very big hack. Yeah. And, and Carlos, uh, you know, you're back at FC Goa now. And in, in the first interview you did with the club, uh, you had said that when you left as a player, you all, always felt that you would return as head coach. You've won two trophies with FC Goa already as a player. You won the Super Cup and uh, you've won the uh, Hero ISL League Winner's Shield. But why did you think at that point of time that you were going to return to FC Goa at some point of time? 
yeah, uh, that's true. I had that feeling when, when I left Goa as a player, no? Uh, when I got retired, I had one thing very clear and, and one desire no, inside me. The first thing is was to, to become a coach. I, I have it uh, very clear. It's something for what I have been preparing for, for many years while I was a player. And the desire was to go back to, to, to Goa again, and of, of course, as a coach. I didn't know when, uh, and sincerely, I didn't expect uh, it would be so soon. But I felt that on, on, on that time. No? Uh, you must go uh, where you are or have been happy. And I recognized that I was very happy playing football and, and living in Goa. And my family was uh, very comfortable uh, at that time. So I'm really happy to, to work again in, in Goa and with FC Goa, of course. And, and what a season to come back and do it, Carlos, because now fans are going to be back in the stands two years without them. And you're going to be back. So I'm sure they're looking forward to that. Uh, they're also looking forward to watching Alvaro Vasquez, who's one of the biggest signings that FC Goa have made so far playing in front of uh, in front of the fans and i know shaiju uh, it was a tad bit disappointed when that happened weren't you shaiju <laughs> uh, hi carlos how are you hello hello pretty good uh, like uh, suyash uh, pointed out right now <laughs> you, you have signed one of the one of the players with most flair in the league alvaro vasquez uh, so my question to you carlos uh, uh what what was the why uh, what was the vital thing uh, can you tell us the story behind of how you signed him from kbfc because we all know he was very vital for kbfc last season up to the finals and uh, what was your initial conversation with him and uh, why do you think he ended up signing for your team fc goa carlos well, as, as any player that fc goa signs is not a work of only one person uh, there are different opinions that we have to discuss to, to finally make a decision. And all of us have our own role in the, in the process. Uh, we have a scouting staff uh, and a sportive director. And of course, the, the, the opinion of the, the coach is, uh, is also important because the player needs to, to fit into the squad. No? And the decision about Alvaro is, it was very easy because all of us knew the player really, really, really good not only for his time in India, uh, also for his past in, in other countries, uh, mostly in Spain. And when we, when we contact him, uh, we found a player very excited and uh, about the chance of playing in FC Goa. So the process was, was easy for, for both parts. We are, we are happy to, to have Alvaro with us. Uh, don't worry about losing him in your team. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure that you will find another great player. Yeah, but it, uh, we are we are really happy to to have him with us. Thanks. Yeah. I was, um, I'll, I'll I'll just take it off from there as well. And you know, part of the Vasquez interview and the digital roundtable that he had, there were there's obviously the mention of you know the way FC Goa play, and and we've seen the basic template of it over the last few years since the start of the club in terms of how the club wants to play. You've been part of it. Clearly, you've had ideas about how to play because you decided early on to become a coach. So, so despite while we know the basic template of what you want to do, what is it that you're going to add? What is going to be the Carlos Pena way? What flavor do you bring into the playing style of FC Goa? Well, uh, I like my teams uh, are proactive. I like uh, a team with a proactive attitude that go for the games and don't wait for things happening into the pitch. I, I like uh, my teams are, are brave uh, offensively and defensively. Okay. And for me, this is the most important in the team. It's the way I have enjoyed as a player and it's the way I'm trying to, to, to put into my teams. No? Uh, the style of FC Goa, most of his years of history, is to control the game with the ball uh, and play an attacking style. FC Goa fans like to to see their team creating chances and scoring goals. And for that, we are going to work. Of course, uh, I have my own style as a coach. I don't like to, to compare teams, to compare uh, coaches uh, and summarize the style of a team in two, three sentences is, is really poor. But what I will try to do is, is something like this. A brave team, a team that goes for the games. And when you are watching a game of FC Goa, you can recognize the team. I think with his own identity.
and where the team yeah. FC has secured the immediate uh, like uh, futures, you know, uh, they have extended contracts with Princeton Ribello, Seriton, and both of them have played with you. So they remember fondly you as the encouraging uh, teammate, and now you're going to be managing them. So how important, you know, as a manager, it is for players to like you, love you, and look up to you. Well, I'm really happy now to hear that from them because I'm sure that their predisposition to, to work with us will be the highest from the first moment. So it, always it's good to hear that from, from the, the players you are going to manage. They know perfectly which are the values I had as a player and they can make an idea about some things we are going to ask for them. So effort and hard work will be unnegotiable for all of us and they know it perfectly. I hope they have the they have the, the same opinion at the end of the season because it will be a, a great sign uh, that we have helped help them to to improve as a players. And just on the topic of uh, the Indian players, uh, Carlos, you know, you, you spent a couple of years at FC Goa. You saw a lot of them from close quarters. In your opinion, who were the ones who? stood out for you at that point of time? Were there any players, Indian players, you saw as a player and you went, wow, this guy is good. You know, he he, he can go far from your current squad. Well, let's see what I had then and has now many good players into the squad and some brilliant also in the in the dev team. Yeah, I remember uh, Liston was very impressive in, in that time. Uh, he, he had an... Uh, many options to play because the coach then decide to to put in the starting eleven and giving options to other players. But uh, you you couldn't see that 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 guy uh, could have a a, a brilliant future, no? And he's showing it in in this moment. And yeah, part of that, I love working with with young players, no? Um, because they don't have limits in their minds. They they give to you everything in any training session. You can see the the the, the shine in, in their eyes in any moment, and we will work to to improve all of them and to make them better. No, because they need to to put their ability their abilities uh, for the team, and we'll work for for improve and to develop uh, all of them. And in general, Carlos, for for Indian players, how important is just the fact that. They have the chance and and the opportunity to prove themselves, you know, in in, in the players' development. Because now, uh, going forward, we we we've seen a lot of Indian players come through recently in the Hero ISL as well, who've got the chance and and the opportunities. How how important is it to just get that opportunity to prove yourself? Well, it's 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 very important. No, I I have heard, I have listened many many fans from many coaches saying that hey, this guy is is a young player. Uh, he's making a lot of mistakes and he doesn't have confidence. Of course, young players uh, make mistakes. Of, of course, young players uh, don't have consistency. Uh, it's because of, of the rage, no? But uh, it's not a problem. The lack of, of experience, I think, is, is not a problem. The lack of, of talent can be a problem. But uh, with young players, you have to be patient. You have to... Don't have problems to use them. Don't look at the passport uh, to use or not use them. If they have talent, let them play. Give them opportunities. It's good that they make mistakes. It's good that they have minutes. And then on that way, they can show their their abilities. We will we'll work on that way. No, uh, A demanding environment, uh, you need to push them. But it's important for young players to, to feel the confidence of the coach to feel the confidence of all, all the players, all the teammates around them. And I think this is the, the best environment for a young player. Feel that confidence. Carlos, to, to, to add on to this point, would you agree to my point that uh, for the last couple of seasons, the best team in the ISL is not the team with the best foreigners. It is the team with the best set of Indian players. Would you agree with that point? Of course, you can use uh, four foreign players and seven Indian players. So the, the Indian players in terms of number are, are very important. Uh, uh, I know also that the influence of the foreign players, it's very important, not only in terms of football, also in terms of uh, helping the, the Indian players with their experience, with their qualities. But the the, the pack of Indian players is, is, is very important. And uh, the coaches who come from the from abroad, we need to, to, to help 
the uh, the domestic players, the football to to grow, to improve, and it's our job. So uh, I I totally agree with you. You know, Carlos, it also comes down to the emergence of these players and 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 what is the right time to bring them in. We we saw last season. Of course, you come in number one in a much longer football calendar, so that gives you more time to kind of work your way around the squad and and build it up. But in a sense. It, continuing from last season and we saw in the duran cup how there were some players who were just coming through like nemil for example is a shining example you know there's a romance to it how are you going to approach the duran cup how do we see you approach of course you mentioned brave so i'm expecting to see a lot of new faces you trying out new things but how do you look at the duran cup in terms of preparing for a grueling isl season yeah, it's a it's a good opportunity, I think, to 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 give uh, uh, chances to uh, all the players into the squad. I think that the new calendar for Indian football is uh, is good because as more uh, games you play, more time to to get experience, uh, more time to improve players, to improve the squad. So yeah, it uh, it will be a, a good chance to to give opportunities to to everyone. We are planning now how we are going to face all the tournaments, all the season. And yeah, I think it's a, a great opportunity, as you said. Superb. And, and you know, like, uh, how closely, Carlos, have you followed the last two seasons of the Hero Indian Super League? And uh, what have the changes that you've seen, you know, when you were a player and now that you're coming back as a head coach? So the changes that you have seen over the years in the ISL? Uh, I have watched uh, many games of the last two seasons, of course. And, of course, all the FC Goa match in the, in the last one, no? Uh, well, a part of, of some changes in the rules now, you can play with, with only four foreign players. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the most important difference uh, is that in the last two years, games have been, have been without fans. And this is a, a huge difference, no? Right. Playing in front of the fans, you play with uh, an extra motivation and an extra passion that right. is impossible to feel without them. And this is going to be our main motivation this season, no? to, to play again in, in front of them. Uh, it's, it will be amazing. It gives sense to, to our job. Uh, the people involved in football play and work for fun. So it's going to, to be exciting. I think this is the, 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 the biggest difference this, this season and it will be a, a great challenge for, for everyone. Carlos, sorry, just, just, just have one more. Pardon me, sorry, sorry. About ah, sorry. What you were saying, sir. No, I was just saying, you know, people shouting from the stands, Go Carlos! <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which brings me to, to what sort of a head coach you are, Carlos. I mean, obviously, you've got a lovely smile. You're very welcoming. And I think the players kind of like you. But I, I, would, I would want to be the last person running into you into a challenge, right? And, and, <laughs> but I do want to know, what kind of a head coach are you on the touchline? Are you involved? Are you like the suited up head coach? Are you the t-shirt and... Slacks head coach, are you the track suit head coach? Are you in there shouting? What is your involvement when you're on the touchline? What kind of a head coach are you? Disciplined, with fun elements? Who are you as a head coach? Well, I, I think I'm, I'm very different every training session than in the, in the match day. No, I think in the match day, it's time for, for the players. Uh, you... You don't need to think on yourself during the match day. You 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 have to say things that help the players to manage the game. But I, it doesn't have sense to be very nervous in the touch line, shouting every time. But I think you are not helping the players. In the training session, it's different. Then you have uh, more time. The 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 players pay more attention to your instructions, and I think it's easier to to send them the me the message during the training session than in the in the match day, but I try to, to help the players. And I think that the best way to help them during the game day, for example, is to, to, to be calm, to uh, show them security, what we are doing, and let them play. Uh, football is to, to enjoy, not only the fans, also for the, for the players. And if I, I have players that are not enjoying during the game, I don't, I don't like them. I, I think you like some really good adjectives in that if you start wearing a white shirt and if you start winning games, I can assure you that Shaiju will not send you a new white shirt because he's already been doing that for the Kerala Blasters head coach. And I think I think Shaiju, can you can you confirm if, if Carlos starts winning in a white shirt? I don't think you're gonna send him one. 
Actually, actually, when Carlos was finishing the last question, I was just about to just about to add this point. I hope I expect you are not wearing you won't wear the white shirt. <laughs> so Carlos, I think you should just wear the white shirt now to 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 prove a point. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think it's important to dress your way. And if I win a, I win a game with uh, some special dress, I, I can change. I know. Ah, <laughs> uh, so. see, see, Carlos, you are a step ahead of the curve in that sense, Carlos. Now let me take you back to your time as a player. You know, just to wrap up this conversation and uh, get a, bit of, uh, uh, you know, an insight into how you thought. Who was the toughest opponent in the Hero ISL that you came across in your playing days? And and who was the best player you played with at the same time? Well, I I remember a, a pair, a couple of strikers that uh, put me the things very hard. That were Messi and Obete when we were when they were playing in, uh, in Kerala. Yeah, yeah, I I remember that two games very tough because their combination between them were were very very good. They were very physical players, and I suffered a lot with them. Uh, we won one game and we draw. I fought the 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 other one. Yeah, but that players I I suffer a little bit against them. And in terms of teams, uh, I like also Bengaluru. The Bengaluru that become champion the the first season I was in in India. They were they were very tough. It was very difficult to 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 attack them to create chances uh, against them. And they were a a very a very solid team. No. And the best player I have played with in India, well, I think without doubt, uh, Koro was the the players yeah. who matched mm -hmm. more the, the difference in India. He was not only important into the box because he was level into the box. He helped us a lot in, in building up. Um, he was a, a great influence into the dressing room. So for me, Koro was a big player that... Uh, will be, I think, the best one in India for many years. Uh, Carlos, one, one final question from my side. One final question. So, so can we have a mutual dream of having a Goa-Kerala final this time? <laughs> uh, hopefully, hopefully. If Goa is in the final, I don't have any problem. Short and sweet way to end it, Carlos. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Let's Football live show today. And uh, looking forward to having you over in India and, and with, this, with the team and, and, you know, to sort of see how you implement your philosophy. When do you join the team, Carlos? Uh, we will start working in India in, the, in August, in the first week yeah. of August. We are right now working, of course, because we are planning many things, but we will be in India in, in August. Yeah. Well, like you said, I'm sure the work has already begun. Once again, thank you so much, Carlos, for joining us. And here's hoping that you do end up having a successful stint back in India when you do come back. Take care. Thank you, guys. Bye. Well, that was a very insightful chat with FC Goa head coach Carlos Peña. And now moving on from the conversation with Peña, we'll go on to the topic of transfers. And Pulas, I want to come to you first regarding that. One of the most significant ones in my book in the last couple of weeks has been the transfer of Diego Mauricio back to Odisha FC. It's a team where he earned his stripes in the Hero ISL initially, went to Mumbai City FC, made history for them in the AFC Champions League and is now back at Odisha. So how do you see that move uh, for all parties? Um, you know, I've always got mixed feelings, Suyash, about people returning to their former clubs. And whether it's, you know, head coaches or whether it's players, it sometimes works out. It's, it's a great romantic kind of an angle, the return of a player. But we've seen with Valskis as well last time, last season at Chennai. It doesn't always go to plan. Um, but given, see, Diego Maurizio is a different kind of player. And, and he's had a good season at Mumbai City. If he can offer Odisha that cutting edge that they kind of missed last time, then I think it, it, it makes sense. But they've also got a returning head coach in Gambao. Right. So, right. so sometimes I believe is, is a step backwards the best way to move forward these are these are difficult to kind of predict but you know given odisha and how much they're always looked at this as, as this underdog story i'm hoping it works out it is an exciting transfer a familiar face back at the club uh, i just hope we can keep up the same performances rather than you know drown in this overbearing story of the return of diego yeah. Mauricio. look 
clearly he's a very skilled and talented player and there's different circumstances around when players leave clubs at certain point, points of time maybe it just works out for all parties that he's back in mumbai city fc uh baki partner odisha fc uh but in terms of do you think this decision has anything to do with the amount of game time that he would potentially get in mumbai city fc and does it also point towards the fact that mumbai city fc do already have someone else in their locker to potentially occupy that central striker spot i think so i think so um i think knowing how they operate they will have a plan they will know why they've let a player go the player probably knows why he's going back to a more comfortable uh, setting where he will be guaranteed more starts i think for forwards it's more important we saw des buckingham kind of try to figure out how to bring in diego last season sometimes it all always didn't you know sometimes it worked but sometimes it did not so i'm hoping that he's back to a system where he fits and and that can make a complete we we've seen examples haven't we deshon brown for example Yeah. goes back to a to a system that suits him in northeast from bengaluru and completely different player i hope the same thing happens with diego maritza and yeah i think uh, you've touched upon how mumbai city may have an ace of yeah. their cards in terms of replacing his presence which we might hear more about in the coming days and weeks yeah. and um, shaju sir coming to you next uh, we've spoken about kerala blasters fc a lot in the past with you but now i want to come to one of their southern rivals in chennai in fc looking for a bounce back this season their fans you know always have great expectations of the team and they've signed a striker in kwame karikari who they are very very excited about so can you shed a bit more light on that transfer yeah yeah so yes uh, like like you said right now that the big problem chennai fc uh, faced uh, last season was about uh, to, 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 to scoring goals in up front actually the the lack of performance the, of the chennai and strikers put them in the back foot last season we all know so they want to they want to repair that section properly so i think the, this will be a good replacement uh, in the likes of uh, the squami karikari uh, as we all know that he is from ghana we already we we the isl fans the indian football fans already had the fond memories of another legend from the same nation asamova jian playing for northeast united already in isl and entertained us already so so hopefully all the chennai and fc fans and our entire uh, indian football loving fans are looking very keenly towards this karigari signing of chennai and fc is coming from thai league i think uh, after scoring 13 goals in the thai league uh, last season and he is already having a lot of exposures in sweden azerbaijan turkish leagues so he is a he is a he is an established striker and he i think he is having a height of 6 foot 3 inches which is a big importance for a striker playing up front so his height will be a crucial factor and i think he is having a nice speed and uh, finishing finishing capabilities as a striker so he's a natural player so very keenly we are looking to towards chennai fc how this african signing uh, are going to perform for them in the coming season in isl fans are so excited that they've already started making compilations of kari kari and there was a split screen compilation that i saw with steven mendoza on one side and kari kari on the other side you know prima facie you've only seen clips so far of kari kari but both both seem to have that innate flair uh, both mendoza and and kari kari in that sense uh, so chennai nfc if if he you know has even half the output that mendoza ended up having for chennai nfc in in his years with the club then uh, it will definitely mark a bit of a step up particularly in that striker position from last season valskis like you mentioned plus earlier uh, returned to chennai nfc and didn't uh, quite fire on all cylinders so he is hoping for the chennai nfc fans that karikari does uh, do the trick for them yeah of course uh, so but 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 uh, so yes, I, i don't think uh, it is a right time to compare uh, karikari and uh, steven mendosa and also i think yeah. is a different kind of a different kind of a it's a player from a different planet all together but hopefully we can we, we we will wait and see that if he can uh if he can compare if he can compensate like uh, what steven mendosa did for chennai in the early stages of isl it will be very good for chennai nfc because they are they are they are a titanic team from the south chennai nfc always yeah. in isl we have to and wait how- and see and watch out because you know the southern derby kari kari can be lethal for kerala blasters <laughs> oh, I see what you did there, Varun. I know I was trying to stoke the fire. 
very nicely done uh but uh, general moving on from transfers now to some more macro indian football teams uh we spoke about the afc uh, asian cup qualifiers that that india uh, you know successfully came through three wins out of three uh, so captain leader legend sunil chhetri decided to of course take a very well deserved break after those qualifiers were done in fact i believe he's uh, still on his holidays i'm sure will be back to pre season training very very soon but he had an interview uh, recently with uh, our very own anand tyagi a very very candid interview and there's one particular excerpt from it which which struck with me uh, and i want to get your reaction on the excerpt he speaks about the indian talent in the team and how their potential from what we've seen so far isn't even perhaps scratching the surface of what they can be if they continue to play in a certain way so i want to play this clip for you guys right now take a look at it and then we'll come back and and uh, and see what you guys have to say about that you know from keeping pace with uh, messi to keeping pace with all the youngsters that you speak so highly about and of course with good reason over the past couple of weeks in fact is the future of indian football now in better hands than it ever has been in the entirety of the 17 years that you've played international football yes a simple answer yes and i and i just hope that the, these boys these kids these lads they they understand you know what they can do like what you have seen in the last three games which was good performances by all the youngsters is still very far away from what they actually can do hmm. you know I, i i don't know if it makes sense anand bhai but once i asked bob houghton what do you what's a good player and he used to tell me that if suppose a player has 8 bucks in him in training if he can give 7 and a half 8 bucks in game he's a good player because a lot of players are 20 bucks 30 bucks in training but they give 6 7 in matches because what you do in training is different than what you can perform in the game that's called temperament and he used to rate it highly i didn't understand then but mm. now i understand and that's why i i speak highly about these boys is because what i see in training the day every one of them now in sync not one individually but if everyone starts giving exactly what they have in training we will be winning more games than we what we, what we do now fact period what i see in ashik anudanta a manveer a akash a roshan a, a jackson a shuraj in training if they start doing in a sync manner and we are going to be much better than what we are right now and i'm not trying to give big hopes to whoever is listening or i'm trying to boost this boys i genuinely mean it mm. so tournaments like this and games like this helps because you are building the bricks so the last three games you saw exactly what akash anwar roshan and uh, ashik did yeah i just hope they continue it now it becomes three games it becomes five games then even 10 games 20 games and then you know you know what akash is settled there is no chance you're going to think about someone else and then his performance is going to go way higher and i don't want to put pressure on him yeah but that's how you build on it because what you saw in the last three games is not anywhere close of what these boys are capable of that's a fabulous thought and i mean it's almost uh, scary in terms of where the sky could be the limit over here with what they're producing but since you're talking about giving eight bucks in training who's been giving eight bucks in training uh, the most and in, in as far as competition with you in training is concerned oh man there's so many man and and, and almost who's all the most, of them, the most competitive almost all of them want to kill me <laughs> i think that's that's that that's what has kept me alive and relevant because because of the way i am they want to give it back to me also gentlemen that was 3 minutes of pure optimism and as an indian football fan first and foremost that really really was music to my ears i don't know about you guys uh, shai ju you know when when the captain himself says something like that about the potential in the team it just leaves you feeling very very hopeful doesn't it Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yes, yes. Uh, like uh, Sunil said right now, uh, see the the youngsters, they can deliver more. That that's what Sunil said. See, actually, they have the potential to provide what they are giving to the national team right now. They all have the potential. So I think, from my personal point of view, Suyash, I think they need more motivational words like this, like Sunil said right now. I think we need to tell them always that you people can do this. You can do it. So it's a positive psychological approach needed for the Indian team 
uh, uh, just before every important matches. That, that, that's, what, that's what our young boys needed right now. What India needs is a miraculous uh, result right now. In the, in, if, we, if we discuss about world football, Asian football, coming up Asian, AFC, Asian Cup, what, what India needs at this moment are miraculous results. And uh, to get that only, only magic, the, to, and to get that, the, the, the magic element we need, we required is the motivational, is, is only thing is motivational and motivation alone. Am I right? Uh, plus motivation alone, would you agree with that? Um, um, I, I can say, you know, Shaiju is a man of words. So there's, there's automatically a weightage on that, but, but it, it is tempting, but I, I think there's more, there's more to it. I think there's more to it in the sense of replicating match pressure situations in training. And Shaiju's club, Kerala Blasters, did that very well. I was having a chat with Ishfa early on for a story I did on, on Jeeks. And, and, and he mentioned one of the drills, which is the most popular among the players, is the one-touch and two-touch passing where the drill stops if anybody gets it wrong, gets it completely wrong. So he said that there's a situation where sometimes Adrian Luna is standing alongside you as one of the partners in the drill and he's getting every one touch pass into your feet. Now, right. if you can't replicate that onto the next one, the drill stops. That's a, there's a pressure, pressure situation. The whole team has to wait if one person can't execute a one touch pass. This is just one tiny example. I think what we need is, I think training of, of a quality where in the match, you know, the, those situations are replicated. Head coaches will continuously talk about replicating match pressure, match, match right. scenarios in training. And has T-Match kind of found a group and the group has to respond to that, right? This group, it seems, as Chetri says, is responding to that pressure. As he mentioned, they want to kill me in training, yeah, you know, yeah. which means they're pushing, they're pushing harder, right? And, and I'm hoping that that, it means that we've technically kind of gotten better. You match that with what Shaiju mentions as motivation. I think the two have to go together. That technical aspect is what got us through those three wins, the, the ability to pass and want the ball. And I think that cannot happen alone with motivation, but with a lot of technical training. And Varun, in particular, I like the extract that uh, uh, the uh, about Bob Houghton. Uh, and right. how Bob Houghton used to have this analogy where, you know, if there's a player who gives maybe eight bucks in training and, and eight right. bucks in, in, in match situations as well, uh, that's who he classifies as a good player. Uh, so j just on that, you know, when, when Chetri shares these kind of anecdotes about Bob Houghton and, and perhaps even just kind of makes you think about how long he's been around the scene for, right? He's, 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 you know, at the age he is, he, he's, he's also basically gone on and said that, look, these guys want to come and kill me in training, but you know me, and he, he cited him as an example for mm. why they want to do that. And that drive and the, the determination that he still has along with the youngsters, I think at least the immediate future is in safe hands, isn't it? Right. Absolutely. And I also want to say that like, you know, the man himself, the man like Sunil Chetri, he's always saying boys, 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 and it's a total optimism around his speech, you know, like, so I'm just wondering, you know, when the team does a huddle before the match or in the dressing room or, you know, during the uh, halftime intervals, that's what he does, you know, inspires the players. And as for the laws, the football laws, uh, the captain, the team captain, it says, I'm just reading out, the team captain has no special status or privileges, but has a degree of responsibility for the behavior of the team. But Sunil Chetri is a lot more than that. You know, the players are looking up to him and, you know, he's inspiring with his words, the way he, you know, like motivates, spreads the optimism before any match. I just wonder what he says, like if we could hear, you know, in those huddles, oh. just before the match starts or, you know, in the halftime intervals when the team is down, like the pep talk, if we could hear that too. To be a fly on the wall, Varun, you know, <laughs> as a fan, that, that's all you want to hear sometimes. But guys, what a nice and cheery and optimistic note to end our latest Let's Football live show on. And uh, here's hoping it'll continue to be the case as we continue to do these shows heading into the Hero ISL season. So thank you, Shaiju. Thank you, Varun. And thank you, Pulas, for your participation once again on the show and uh, and bringing your A-game to, uh, to football analysis and whatnot too, when it comes to the Hero ISL. And uh, we will see you guys very, very soon. Take care. And Jamshedpur have won the Hero ISL. Hajibar!